I'm doing something a little different today, guys. Hey, guys, welcome back. That's by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again, taking a look at uh, this intro that I made for myself uh, a little bit ago. And I wanted to do a little bit of a breakdown of the process that I went through when I was creating it. If I play, it's going to lag a little bit, but uh, you can pretty much see what goes on here. So it kind of swoops, uh, kind of swoops around. Particles come out. It looks really, really cool and really sleek and really nice. I love this a lot. It's one of my favorite things that I've done in a long time. Uh, and it looks really good. It's sparkly and shiny, mysterious and whatever, and it's glowy. Um, so I wanted to break down a little bit of the, the stuff that I uh, that I went through when I was making this. It didn't take me too long. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the material tab just for this, just material mode up here. Uh, so if I swing around here, you can see I have all these different colored balls, well, all these same colored balls here, uh, reflecting the color of the text, and more importantly, three different uh, point lamps I have up here. So let me turn my overlays back on. Um, if I take a look at the text really quick, let's start at the text, because that's kind of the main center of everything. Uh, hit period to zoom on into an object. Uh, we have two different text layers here, uh, 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 actually, because what I did was I wanted the outside to be different color, than the emission part of the text. So I kind of just uh, duplicated the emission portion here and then changed the uh, offset value to, uh, to, make it, to make it a little bit bigger than the actual text and then I extruded it uh, a little bit less. So I turned the extrude value down a little bit. You can see for the extrude value I have this on, uh, for the main text I have it on 0.2 and 0 for the offset, then for the black portion I have it on 0.99 and 0.002 for the offset. Um, I have a video specifically about this, I'll leave a link at the end of this video most likely, uh, so keep an eye out for that, how to uh, edit text without converting anything so I can still edit the, the what it says. Um, and the, the other part we have to this is uh, super simple, it's just the particles which uh, are being emitted from this plane here. You can see the, the plane kind of just swoops backwards and then just goes upwards so it's not in the way. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And the, the movement for the text here kind of swings around. If I play this from the camera's point of view, it has depth of field so it'll lag a little bit. But the text kind of rotates around so you don't see it when it starts. And then it kind of just moves around just a little bit. You can see that it's moving with the camera. And then it kind of just zooms in to go into focus. Uh, which is really, really simple. Now, the particles are moving uh, backwards to give a little bit of movement to them so it th they don't stay 100% still. But the biggest part of this is actually the effects. So if I select the camera here, go to the render viewport shading, you can see if I turn all of this stuff off, so if I turn depth of field off, that still looks pretty good, actually. But if I turn depth of field off and I turn bloom off, and I turn screen space reflections off, you see it kind of loses pretty much everything that made it cool in the first place. I mean, it looks okay, but it doesn't look good nearly at all, mostly. So probably uh, the biggest part of this is actually the effects, like I said. So if I turn the bloom back on, it gets a little bit better, right? And then if I turn the screen space reflections back on, then it gets a lot better. And on top of that, we will go ahead and turn back on in the camera's view, uh, in, in the camera tab here. So go back to the camera, and I turn the depth of field back on. Then it gets even better. But now, with, without the depth of field, I still think this looks pretty solid. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it looks pretty solid, especially considering that it uh, it's not lagging nowhere near as much. So that's still workable, and it might even look a little bit better depending on what you're going for. But I like the depth of field. It gives a bit of mystery, um, and it gives a bit of depth as well. Um, this looks really good, but it looks it looks kind of kind of 2D-ish. But it, that's what looks good to me. But I like the depth of field uh, for this specific uh, scene. For the bloom, I have a very very slight reddish uh, orange color here. For the point lamps, I actually have uh, this one is solid gray. I think actually was that was it the was it bloom actually no the bloom is solid gray as well. The bloom is solid gray, solid white pretty much actually. Um, and then for the point lamp for the three of these, I have a darker kind of desaturated orangey yellow. Then I have a kind of uh, reddish blood orange desaturated. Then I have a very saturated orange, and then for the final one, I have a almost uh, purpley red desaturated color like that. Um, and you can change all these colors to, of course, to get different colors, but since there's so many different values I need to change for all of these different point lamps, I kind of just went ahead and went to compositing and changed the hue here. So I have a couple of things going on here. 
Um, I have the render layers hooked up into a hue saturation and value, which is shift a search hue and then hue saturation value. And then I have that hooked up into a lens distortion, which is shift a search uh, lens distortion right there. And then I just used a little bit of dispersion to kind of give the feeling uh, it's looking kind of um, dispersed. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I hooked that up into a viewer, which is shift a search viewer right there. And I hooked uh, that up and also make sure it was connected to the composite. So it would composite all of this when it, when I was rendering it. Uh, and if I render a image really quickly, actually, I think I should have had one, but it got rid of it before. So if I render an image really quickly, um, so you can see what is going on here. Uh, and it renders any second now it should be to any se just right about now. That would have been really cool if it worked what I said now, but, you know, it wants to make me look stupid. But that's fine. Like I said, because of the effects that we have on this one, it does take a little bit longer than normal for Eevee to actually compile and, and fix and um, and actually continue rendering. This is a long time for this scene, uh, but there we go. All right, so as you can see, I do have this set to a grayscale. It was it was on orange, but you see the little bit of dispersion, dispersion that I have done here with the uh, varying colors that's separating the RGB. That's pretty much what dispersion does. Uh, let's go back to the uh, viewport here so I can show you in real time. I turned the saturation almost all the way down, but if I put it back to 0.5, uh, no, I'm sorry, not 0.5, but I put it back to 1, rather, uh, and then put the hue back to, what is this, you know, 0.5. Yeah, if I put those back, you can see that's the default orange that we had. Um, you can just change the hue here. It's much easier to do than change it anywhere else. So I can have a nice green or a nice blue or something else or a purpley, um, you know. So it looks really good and it's very customizable as well. So it's it's really super easy to do. Um, and then this dispersion down here, if I turn it way up, it's going to be way too much. But just so you can see what it does, uh, it kind of, you know, separates all of the colors and values. So if I put this on point 0.2, you can see that it will have an even stronger effect, but that's way too much for the scene. So I go ahead and do 0 0.05, and it looks pretty good like that. Um, so yeah, and I also turn fit on so it wouldn't uh, have these edges down here. You can see if I zoom in, if I zoom in, sorry, no, if I zoom in, if I zoom, if I zoom, there we go, Alt F, Alt V, sorry. If I zoom in, you can see those little edges there on the sides. Maybe if I change to a different color, it'd be easier to see. Eh. A little bit, I guess. Uh, it has the a little bit of, a, of the black, darker colors on the edges because it's not actually fit to the screen. So then I do that so it makes sure it goes all the way out to the edge since we have a bit of dispersion on there. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much all the stuff that I did for this scene. It's actually really simple, but it just looks really good. Um, I love it. I love the way it looks so much. Um, for the sphere, the sphere has a generic color on it, the sphere that I used for the particle system. Um, I just added a bunch of metallic, a bunch of specular, turn the roughness all the way down, a little bit of sheen on there, and it's just a solid black color. It's almost solid black. It's not all the way black, but it's solid, almost solid black, um, and that's the same material that I'm using on the edges of the text as well. So this right here is the same color as the black balls, and then for the plane, uh, for the particle system, I have it on a thousand. I had to play around with the seed a lot. So that I could find one where I, where like it, a, a big giant ball didn't go in front of the text and like sit there for the longest time. So I had to change the seed to eight, the frame start one, and then end on thirty, um, so it doesn't emit the entire time. I have the lifetime on two fifty because that's the end of the scene. And I have a lot of uh, different settings here with the with the brownian, the brownian, the damp is on point zero fifteen. Uh, scale randomness all the way up, of course, and I got some of these settings here. Nothing too crazy. I didn't change anything in velocity. I did change. Uh, what did I change? I changed, uh, bu bu bu. of course, the gravity is all the way off, and field weights is zero on gravity. Um, what did I change? Oh, I showed that already. <laughs> Never mind. The uh, the brownie in the in the damp. That's what it was. But uh, but yeah, that's it for this scene. That's it's a really simple scene. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. A little different today. I created something, and I figured I'd just show it off since I didn't do it on camera. Yeah, that's going to be it for today's breakdown tutorial type of thing. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Uh, but until then, bye-bye.